By now, everyone who has wanted to see Deadpool and Wolverine most likely has. But if you haven't just yet, and you want to stay spoiler free, go watch the movie, and then check out this video after. Alright, let's get to the build. I'm almost always wearing headphones while I'm in the shop, whether that's to protect my ears from the loud machines, listening to podcasts, cadaver dogs find human remains, wood could have been used to burn a body, or further damaging my ears while rocking out during a strenuous glue up. They are an essential piece of my day-to-day -day that helps me get through any project. So with the release of Deadpool and Wolverine a few weeks ago, I thought this would be the perfect opportunity to build something fun and useful to give my headphones a place to dock and charge at the same time. I also want to test my artistic ability with the paint job on this project. So again, last chance to turn back now and avoid spoilers. This is my version of Headpool, one of the many variants to show up during the climax of the film. He works as the perfect place to keep one of my most essential shop items while also containing a secret cord around back to keep them nice and charged. As a longtime fan of Deadpool, I was excited to learn of the possible appearance of this character in the movie. And even though his screen time wasn't very long, it was awesome to see this character along with many others during the Deadpool core sequence. As I began looking for a model to print, it was apparent that there really weren't a whole lot of options. Even so, I settled on this specific one that was very detailed, and had a perfect mix of grotesque zombie skull and movie accurate mask. I scaled the model up to the largest size I could fit on my printer bed, flipped it upside down, and began one of my longest prints so far. About six hours in, and this is what everything looked like. Aside from the supports getting mangled from pretty much the beginning, it seemed to be printing just fine. So after about a day of checking on it periodically, this is what we're left with. Not too bad actually, and I'm just glad it came out at all. Can you tell I'm still learning? As you can see, the print was a little rough around the edges. I haven't had any luck with organic supports. They always seem to fall apart from the beginning. All the little hairs are spots where the printer was extruding for the supports and caught the edge when moving back to the center. But at the end of the day, they didn't seem to affect much of the stability of the print. I screwed in a hook at the top to hang the model from a stretched line allowing me to access all sides. That will make it much easier to paint. And now that it's a nice cool 105 out, I'm gonna go ahead and put a primer on here and that weather will definitely help this dry a lot quicker. And the primer I chose to use is Rust-Oleum's Automotive Primer 2-in-1. I like this because it sands really nice and it fills all those little pinholes. Spraying on a windy day is less than ideal, but in the desert, you take what you can get. After a few coats of primer, it's time to tape and paint. Quite the arduous process, but it will definitely be worth it in the end. I began by spraying the black areas around the eyes. Looking back at this now, I actually could have done the next step first, then taped off for the black, but oh well. Before I moved on, I wanted to attach this spine extension. 
It was part of the model I had to slice off to fit my printer, but I knew I could glue it back on later. Now back to tape the inverse sections. This part is a lot of repetition, so... Cue the f***ing montage, baby. And now that I have all of the base coats down, I can finally move on to detail painting with a dry brush. But before I get too far into it, I want to figure out how I'm going to mount this to the wall. So I think I'm going to try and do it with a three quarter PVC pipe. I have kind of an idea in mind, so hopefully that works out, but we got to do that first. Got to get this guy unwrapped and uh, then we can move on. So I think my best approach to this is drilling a hole in the back of the head here and putting a piece of PVC pipe in the back to then attach to the wall. But I only have a one inch wide spade bit and PVC pipe is one and a sixteenth. So I'm gonna drill this hole and then hopefully open it up a little bit. Put the PVC pipe in there with some epoxy and leave it in there, let it cure. And then I can cut it off based on the distance away from the wall that I want it to be. Um, so let's pop a hole through the back here and hopefully we can squeeze the PVC pipe in there. Now I'm just going to mix up some five minute epoxy and then put it around the PVC and jam it in there and hopefully it hits enough of the walls in there to uh, stay pretty secure. Hopefully this works. We'll see. <laughs> Now I'm gonna go out on a limb and say this was actually pretty successful. I was literally just hoping it would epoxy to enough of the inside to cure solid. And that's exactly what happened. A little cleanup before everything dries because boy, this stuff can really make a mess. On to the more fun yet pretty nerve wracking step of the process. I'm no artist, so I just did my best to add weathering to create depth and realism. It honestly feels like it's pretty hard to mess up at this point considering you could just wipe away any mistakes, but even then I'm still meticulous as I apply the dry brushing and shading. Some sections I would need to go over multiple times because I may have wiped a little too much off, but it's very easy to just go back and repeat the process. I really like how the black paint settles down into the texture because it really starts to bring this mask to life. I then repeated the same process with the top helmet, creating some depth within the divots. I'll shortly go back over and add some rust drips to make it look like it's very weathered. Moving on, I added a bone colored white base coat to the jaw and spine. I'll go back over this in a minute to add depth with more black wash and dry brushing.
The section of the skull was probably the most difficult to get to while trying to stay within the lines and not disrupt any previous paint job. I really like how each step started to bring this whole thing together. Who knew a headphone stand could be so intricate? Lastly, I sprayed a flat clear over the entire thing to help protect the paint job. I should have went back over the eyeball with a gloss to add more realism, but I was just happy to get this thing near completion. Honestly, I'll probably go back and fix that in the future. One of the final details was to add the propeller to the top of the helmet. I attached that with a bit of CA glue and activator. The propeller slides right on and actually does have a bit of movement to allow slight positioning. Here I've positioned the propeller to make sure it won't collide with the wall. That also determines the distance away from the wall it will sit. And then to fish the charge cable through and into the model. The PVC pipe helps hide everything as the cord traverses into the wall. This is what I came up with for the mount. The idea is to allow mounting into the edge of a stud and also let the cord pass into the wall while concealing the mount within the pipe as seamless as possible. As you'll see, it mostly worked. I had a bit of trouble locating the stud, hence the enlarged mounting hole. Nothing a bit of spackle and paint won't fix. Or who knows, maybe this mount will fail and I'll have to replace it with something more substantial. You'll also notice the crack along the mount from installation. I don't see this as much of a problem since when sliding it into place it compresses back to its original shape while sitting tightly within the pipe. Following the cable down to the bottom of the wall, I popped a hole just big enough to retrieve the cable from. I also printed this two-piece grommet to help finish the exit point off. And now to put this thing to use. This is the perfect placement within steps from my shop where I know they'll be conveniently charged and ready to go. And the bonus, when not acting as a headphone holder, it's a pretty sick piece of art, if I do say so myself. Hey, thanks for watching all the way to the end. Let me know you made it here by typing maximum effort in the comments down below. If you enjoyed this video and you wanna be updated when I post new ones, like and subscribe. And if you want to see how I built this modern drill charging station behind me, check out this video. And if not, thanks for stopping by.